Day two at Augusta National, the wind blew, blew some scores up. The greatest comeback maybe of all time needed another comeback from Tiger Woods. And the world's number one played like the world's number one. That's why Scotty Scheffler leads the Masters after 36 holes. Hi, everybody. Rod Black, along with our master of golf analysts, Ian Leggett, uh, who was, I'm sure, captivated all day. And Lego, not too often that we talk at the Masters about a player who was nine shots off, but let's face it, all eyes are still on the Tiger Woods <laughs> Invitational. Uh, boy, it looked rocky for Tiger. I don't think Canada's Wonderland has a roller coaster ride quite like what Tiger Woods was on today. Absolutely. And it was looking, it was going to crash right out of the gate. I'll tell you what, it just continues to, as I keep talking about the legacy of Tiger Woods, Blackie, this guy just never fails to continue to surprise us. And, you know, there was no doubt about it. I think that anyone in their right mind watching today and that start that he got off to thought he was heading towards something like an 80 today and we weren't going to see Tiger on the weekend. But that's not what happened. This guy is a grinder. And you know what I noticed on the back nine, too, is as soon as he made a couple of those birdies and he hit that incredible shot on 10, um, something happened with him. He started walking like the old Tiger. If you watched him march off that 18th green when he was heading to the clubhouse to do scoring, that he the limp went away. Anything that looked like a resemblance of a man that has been beaten up so badly went away. And the interview afterwards was also intriguing because he's got a little twinkle in his eye. This thing is not even close to being over for Tiger Woods chasing down the leader right now. Yeah, I guess the question is, uh, can somebody catch a guy who's playing like Tiger did in his prime? Scotty Scheffler put on a clinic in very blustery conditions. Yeah, we've seen this before, though, Blackie. We've seen mm -hmm. guys, you know, jump out to leads like this. And we talked about it earlier uh, this week with the likes of Rory McIlroy in that final round 80 that he shot. And obviously still a lot of scar tissue around Augusta National. And what can happen on that back nine? Tiger just needs to have a twinkle. And it was interesting to me. He didn't say he needed a sniff going into the back line. He said, if I can get within five or six going into the back nine on Sunday, I still have a chance. But Scotty Scheffler is another guy. We'll wait and see where this thing goes. But as I said, at the start of the week, he's been flying under the radar at world number one. He's not flying under the radar anymore, leading at Augusta going into the weekend. I guess it's no surprise to you though, that some of the guys who know Augusta so well, are, are, are able to stay within striking distance. Hideki Matsuyama, Charles Schwartzel. He still needs an E and an S, but that's a story for another day. Danny <laughs> Willett, former champion, still hovering. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, there is some experience there, and these guys have put on a green jacket before. They know what it's all about, but that still doesn't take away from the pressure. Uh, you know, these guys live for this moment, playing professional golf. If you don't love the juices flowing, the butterflies, the anxiety, everything that goes along with heading into the weekend with an opportunity to win a golf tournament, you kind of miss out on that opportunity. But this is the difference between these guys and everybody else is that – you know, they are ready to put on another green jacket. The one thing that the one guy I know we're going to get into the surprising uh, players of the field. But, you know, Charles Schwarzer is one of those guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy's been nowhere literally since he did win the last major uh, and win at Augusta. So um, it'll be interesting to see where he comes from heading into the weekend as a guy who supposedly has that experience of winning around here. Yeah. For Canadians, Mike Weir did not make the cut. The cut was high. Uh, everybody plus four and better made the cut. Mac Hughes did make the cut. Corey Connors, does he have a legitimate chance? Clearly, he's going to have to post a big number on moving day. Yeah, I mean, this is a combination of two things. And by the way, this is a long way to go. As we said, mm -hmm. this tournament is only now just started for those top 25 guys. But he's got to get off to a good start. And also, you need a quick stumble out of the gate from Scotty Scheffler, a guy who's leading by that much. And everybody says, you know, this is the what we need. We need a little bit of both getting off to a good quick start. Um, you can get a, around Augusta National in one or two under through those first two or three holes. So, and that settles the nerves down. Scotty Scheffler goes out there and makes a quick bogey and gets off to a one or two over start after those first four or five holes. And anything can happen on the weekend, especially for a guy who hasn't won a major championship yet. Brother, you called it the course drying out the wind. Uh, it's going to be cold 
on Saturday. Give me some names. Give me an idea of what you think, how this is going to play out on moving day. Well, a guy who putts great, understands these conditions, and I just mentioned him a minute ago, is Shane Lowry. Um, the way that he played around Port Rush, I mean, I don't know if there was a more brilliantly ex executed British Open other than maybe when Henrik Stenson took down Phil Mickelson. But, I mean, he knows how to get around the golf course in conditions like that. Augusta National is not quite Port Rush, uh, but he is a guy that knows how to make putts and knows how to control himself in difficult conditions. But this also is going to lend itself to experience the guy who's been around there, the guy who's not going to get frustrated with the odd, you know, bad bounce or the, the odd bogey or double bogey that's going to happen tomorrow. And so those guys that have experience winning major championships are the guys who are going to have a leg up on everybody else. Yeah. Such a special tournament, special place, even more special this year. And how about that special shot on 16 Stewart sink? No chance of making the cut, but he gets a hole in one on 16 and celebrates with his caddy, who, by the way, Lego just happens to be his son. You're absolutely son. right. I mean, the, the beautiful thing about about Stuart Sink, and this is if you want to call it his second or third career, um, he's done all of this with his son. He won at Harbortown with his son. Um, so bringing his kid onto the bag and being able to experience moments like this with a victory on the PGA Tour in the twilight of your career and then dunk one on 16. I mean, I love the reaction of them both walking off the tee. They probably took 15, 20 steps before they realized, yeah. hey, this thing might actually go in. So, I mean, these are things that you... You know, Stuart Sink's got a British Open under his belt, and I'll tell you what, that may have been one of the most, you know, unfavorable uh, major championships in taking down Tom Watson at that particular time because there's only a handful of people, and their last name were Sink, that wanted him to win that British Open. So uh, to be able to experience this type of stuff with his kid is just stuff that trumps everything else. Yeah, the, that will go down as the one that Sink sunk uh, and had everybody roaring. You could hear the roar everywhere. Can't wait for the roars on day three at the 86th Masters. Lego, thanks once again. We'll see you tomorrow night. Sounds good, buddy.